Hey, it's Tom. So I've spent a couple of last weeks playing with Flutter. After a long time of avoiding multi-platform solutions, um, because of bad memories caused by Cordova, I decided that this year I will give them a chance again. Today I want to share with you my thoughts about Flutter from the perspective of iOS developer. Okay, let's start. Let's start with what I find really good. So at first, Dart is super easy to learn if you know JavaScript, Java, Swift, or Kotlin. Uh, the syntax is very similar to JS, so you can start playing with Flutter after two or three hours of reading Dart documentation and Cheat Sheet, which I really recommend. Another good thing is that you can use the IDE of your choice. Android Studio, Visual Studio Code, IntelliJ, you can use whatever you want. Thanks to this, you don't have to learn both a new language, framework and IDE at the same time. It also helps to start quickly. It's super easy and free to learn it from scratch. Detailed documentation, lots of tutorials explaining every aspect of app programming, a dedicated YouTube channel with many videos. Well, I'm really impressed. The same UI on all devices is really true. This time it's not only a clickbait. In Flutter, UI is drawn from scratch, pixel by pixel. This is why it's possible to achieve exactly the same look on every single device, platform and OS version. The app will look exactly the same not only on iOS and macOS, but also on every Android phone, regardless of the theme created by the manufacturer. Funny thing is that this is impossible to achieve using native Android programming because of the widgets uh, are customized. There are tons of ready-to-use widgets that save time and allows you to quickly prototype apps that look great. Either you will choose Material UI or Cupertino theme. Uh, this is pretty similar to what mobile developers are used to, as both Android and iOS offer widgets for most typical use cases. But for web developers, that might be a nice surprise. If you don't like the system widgets, you can always customize it or use built-in layouts to build your own widgets from scratch. Of course, that's, that's also easy to do. Another great thing is Hot Reload. If you are developing a more sophisticated app and you have a meeting with designers who want to uh, move it a little bit left or, um, well, actually maybe move it a little bit right, then you will love Hot Reload, as it will save you a lot of time. This is just one situation, but it really improves the development process on a daily basis. If you are an Android or iOS developer, you will be surprised how much time does it save. You spend less time on testing. If you have one code base, then you write tests once. This is obvious, but sometimes we forget about such things. And uh, this can be also considered as a great time saver. And let's be honest, nobody likes to write tests. Another thing that is still in my mind is state management. It's pretty easy to learn if you have ever worked with React.js. You can just use uh, the same concept, either props hell or go into much cleaner state management, which concept is really familiar to React developers. We have provider and consumer. That allows us to skip data propagation between multiple nested widgets, which are not really using it. Uh, another important thing, and I think good, is declarative programming. It demands a different way of thinking, as a lot of mobile developers got used to imperative programming, but for React developers, Flutter looks more like a sugar syntax than a new platform and framework. Okay, not everything is so great, so let's talk about those things that annoy me. Flutter draws everything from scratch and looks exactly the same on all platforms. This is great if you're writing your whole app in Flutter, but if you want to write only a part of your app in Flutter, it will most likely look different than the rest written using native SDK. As a result, your app will look weird, like uh, Frankenstein. Of course, you, you can write Android part using uh, Material UI and iOS part using Cupertino widgets. Thanks to that, it will look more native but you'll you will duplicate a lot of code, at least whole UI code, and I'm not really sure if this will still save your time. Another important thing is that Flutter is not major, and I feel like it's missing some broadly accepted architecture standard. Android uses MVP, iOS uses MVC or MVVM, and in the case of Flutter, each source code I have seen was using some own approach. This is really weird. Another thing that you should still keep in your mind is that accessing more sophisticated platform-specific features still demands writing native code and calling it from Flutter. Keep that in mind because if your app 
uh, does need to work with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, maybe custom camera access or any other sophisticated technology, it may turn out that you will write a lot of native code and just UI wrapper in Flutter and as a result you will sacrifice native feeling and not save as much time as you expect. Another problem is that it's easy to say that you write once, design once and deploy to all platforms. But let's be honest, mobile UI doesn't look good as a web, same with desktop. desktop. Uh, you need to redesign the app and as a result you start using different widgets, which force you to handle the logic in a little bit different way. Writing one app for Android and iOS is okay, that really works, but I feel like support for other platforms is not really needed, at least at this point. And uh, they offer just better tools to develop great native apps for, for them. Not really sure if this is a big problem. Uh, for me that was obvious, but it may not be obvious for everyone. You still need an Apple computer to build Flutter apps for iOS, because Flutter SDK uses Xcode to prepare builds. Ok, so you already know what are my key observations about Flutter, so it's definitely time to sum it up. I really like Flutter and I will definitely spend more of my free time playing with it, but I'm still convinced that it will not replace native development. Flutter is a great tool to rapidly prototype MVP, which you can present to your investors, potential clients uh, or partners. It might be also an awesome solution if you have to deliver the app as soon as possible to get more time to work on more sophisticated and more polished native solution. But if you have to deliver some more sophisticated app, then you start writing more and more native code and as a result, the profit of using Flutter is getting smaller and smaller. Last but not least, of course, uh, it's owned by Google and they like to kill things. Hopefully it will not happen to Flutter anytime soon, but at some point, who knows, just keep that in mind. I hope this video helped you. If you agree or disagree with my insights, feel free to let me know in the comment section below the video. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!